In this video, we're going to look at finding the curved surface area of a cone. This is a picture of a cone. The first thing I'm going to do is just turn it upside down. If you've ever been to the seaside and you've got chips, often they're in a cone. The curved surface area is where you would put your hand. So everything that you can touch around the outside is the curved surface area. When you're answering a question on the surface area of a cone, check whether it's a solid. If it's a solid, you will also need the area of the circle on the bottom. In later examples, we will look at that, but for now, we will focus on the curved surface area. If we have a cone with a base radius r and a slant height of l, the area is given as pi l r or pi rl. It just means pi, which is just a number, multiplied by l, which is now this height just here, the slant height, multiplied by the radius. It isn't the perpendicular height. We use the perpendicular height when we were finding the volume. So let's go ahead and look at a question. We need to find the curved surface area of this particular cone. So we can say that the area is pi multiplied by the radius multiplied by the length. You might see it written as pi RL or pi LR. It really doesn't matter. So we've got the area is going to be pi multiplied by the radius, which is 6, multiplied by the slant height, as we've got the slant height, which is going to be 11. As an exact answer, so if we weren't using a calculator, in terms of pi, this would give us now 66 pi, and the units are going to be centimetres squared. So this is what we call an exact answer. And of course, in the calculator, you can simply type in 66 shift pi, and that will give us now, what, 207.3 centimetres squared. What we've done is found now the area of everything we can touch on the outside. So right the way round, but not in this particular case, the area of the circle. We will assume that this now is a hollow cone. OK, let's look at another example. What we're asked to do in this one is find the total surface area of this solid. So what we've got now is the curved surface area and also the area of the circle on the bottom. So the total area is going to be equal to, and just writing this out, is going to be pi multiplied by the radius multiplied by the slant height plus the area of the circle, which is just pi r squared. If you're comfortable with factoring, you can do this now as pi r, then you have L plus R. So if you wanted to, you could use this particular formula, um, but if not, you can do it individually. So if we do that, let's just check what we have. Well, we've got now the slant height rather than the perpendicular height, which is good, and we've got a base radius. So we'll have pi multiplied by the base radius of 5.2 multiplied by the slant height of 13.9 plus now pi multiplied by the radius squared which is going to give us 5.2 squared. So we can go ahead and simply type this into a calculator. So with the calculator now we can hit shift pi and then we've got now the 5 and you can use brackets or the multiplication sign it really doesn't matter. Then we've got 13.9 and then we will add to that now pi and we will multiply that now by 5.2 squared. And that is going to give us now on there 2483 over 25 pi. So this is our exact answer. Or 312. So 312. And I'll give this to the nearest integer. And this will be millimetres squared. Remember, this is an area. So whatever units are, it will be squared. If we'd gone for this factored approach, what we would have had is now pi multiplied now by the radius, which we know is 5.2, 
and then if we just, and loads of different ways you can type this in, and then we would have 13.9, which is L, the slant height, plus now the radius, which is 5.2, and that will give us exactly the same as we've just seen. So there we go, 312 millimetres squared. Okay, on this one, we need the curved surface area. We've got an issue here, though, because instead of the slant height, we've got the perpendicular height. As we saw in the video with the volume of a cone, we can use Pythagoras theorem to work this out. So what I'm going to do is just, and that looks a little too long as before, we're going to drop a perpendicular down from the top of this cone to the centre. This is what we call a right cone because we have now a right angle between the base radius and the height. If I drew a cross section of this, what we're going to have is something that looks like so. I'll put the dimensions on and it'll give you some idea of what's going on. So that looks something, not a brilliant triangle, but hopefully you get, uh, get the idea of what's happening. So we have this right here, which is going to be the right angle. We have the base radius, which is given now to be 6. We've got the perpendicular height, which is 8. And what we need to do is find the slant height. Using Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the longer side. So what we can say on here is that 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to L squared. If you've already spotted that this is one of our special triangles, it's going to be one of our triples. That's perfectly fine. If not, you can keep going using Pythagoras theorem. So that gives us now that 100 is equal to L squared. So L is going to be the positive square root of 100 as it's a length. So L gives us 10. So all we need to do now is write that the area is pi r l. We need the curved surface area. It's not the solid, so I don't need to include the circle on the bottom. And the area is pi multiplied by the radius, which is 6, multiplied by the slant height. And the slant height, as we know, is going to be this right here. Or if you wanted to look at it as a right angle triangle, probably a bit better there. Um, and then we just put in it now that this is going to be 10. So we can say that this is going to be 60 pi. So we've got 60 pi, and that is going to be meter squared. On the calculator, type that in, hit SD, and that will give you the value as a decimal. As stated, I always prefer to leave it in what we call exact form in terms of pi. I just think it looks neater, and it's easier to work with when you don't have a calculator. Okay, um, on this one, curved surface area is 189 centimetres squared. We've got a radius of 6 centimetres and a slant height now of y centimetres. So all we're going to do here is find the value of y, which is the slant height. So the area is equal to pi rl, or pi lr, really doesn't matter. So substituting in, 189 is equal to pi multiplied now by 6, which is the radius, multiplied by y. Pi is just a number. What this is saying is pi times 6 times y is 189. Therefore, we can say 189 divided by 6 pi, or pi times 6, will give us the value of y. So all we've done is simply solve an equation. If I said, for example, 6 is equal to 2x, well, we know that 6 divided by 2 would give us x. So if this quantity, 6 pi is multiplied by y to get 189, then 189 divided by 6 pi is y. So we can, uh, we can find this as a decimal answer. I'm not going to because I'm going to keep it exact and say that the area is going to be pi multiplied now by the radius, which is 6, multiplied by the slant height. Uh, oh, we've, in fact, we've done it, haven't we? We've answered the question. I don't know why. don't know why I'm bothering doing that. We've done it. Y is equal to this. Um, uh, yeah, don't need, to, don't know why. Right, let's just type this in to give uh, a decimal answer. Uh, six, uh, let's put that in there. Uh, delete, uh, six pi, and then that will give us what we need. So what is that? Ten point, 
uh, 10.02, so we'll say that that's going to be now 10.0, so this will be now 10.0, and that will be, uh, uh, we've already got centimetres, haven't we? So it'll be 10.0, and that's a value of y, and that is given now to one decimal place, uh, 1 dp. So nice and straightforward. Right, uh, let's do one more. Okay, so this one, we've got the volume is 236 meters cubed and we need to find the curved surface area. So we're given now a base radius of five meters. A lot of work to do with this one. Um, what we're gonna do is first drop a perpendicular down here. In the video on the volume, we saw that the volume is given as one third pi r squared h. What I need to do is first find this height, then I can use Pythagoras to find the slant height. So this is a multi-step problem and we need this just here. Remember as well, just extending that, that's the radius as well. So the radius obviously uh, can be placed anywhere on there and that's what we'll do. So let's go ahead. So two, three, six will be equal to one third pi then we'll have the radius squared. Now the radius is five, five squared multiplied by the height. Remember the height right here is going to be this length here and this one is L and we know that that one of course is R. So if I want the value of H, all I need to do is two, three, six divided by this quantity here. So five squared is 25. So this would be 25 pi divided by three. And I can do that in one hit. That will then give me the height. So that looks messy. Don't worry about it. It's perfectly fine. The more comfortable you become with dealing uh, with these messy fractions, the better. So what we have then is that this is going to be five meters. This one right here, we've just found the, the perpendicular height, which is 2, 3, 6 over 25 pi over 3. And we need this one, which is L. So yet again, we can use Pythagoras theorem to find that. We know this squared plus this squared is equal to this one squared. So L squared is equal to 5 squared plus all of this uh, just here squared. If you want to find an answer on the calculator for that, you can do. I always think to myself, what I'm going to do is type that in and just store it in case I need to come back to it. So with this one, we'd have 236 and we would divide this now by 25 pi by 3. So 25 pi by 3 and that gives us now this 9, whatever. Shift, store, a will store it in there. So let's say you did another calculation, six times three gave you 18, and then you did that. If you wanted to find that answer again, you would simply press recall A, and it'll bring it back. That's what it is, that's that value right there. So what I'm going to do, L is going to be the square root of five squared, which is 25 plus this value squared, um, and whatever it's going to be, but I've got that in the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we'll have is 25 plus, and of course you don't have to do this, you could just simply substitute that in earlier. Uh, a squared, which is this value right here, and that gives us now 10.30. Uh, 10 so L is equal to, L is equal to 10.30, blah, 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 blah. So if we want now just the curve surface there, so we don't need the bottom, that's pi, multiplied by the radius, multiplied by the slant height. So we're going to have the area is going to be pi multiplied by 5, multiplied by what's in the calculator as my answer, dot, 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 and then we can find that answer. So if I just multiply this now by, we can do it by 5 and times pi, or you can just do it by 5 pi. Uh, these calculators are quite forgiving in terms of multiplication, uh, in terms of how you use the signs and the brackets. So 161.9. So 161.9 to one decimal place. And remember, this is in metres, so our curved surface area will be in metres squared. If you did need the total uh, surface, uh, total area of the solid, including the bottom, then you would simply add 
pi r squared, where r is 5, the area of the circle. So there we go. That is the curved surface area of a cone.